This is code.org, and we're going to investigate and modify. Run the program to observe the results. Then experiment with the program by making the following changes. All right, or modifications. Let's see. Whoa. What we got? Printing the enhanced for loop. Okay, and it looks like we're just printing out these numbers in order. Yep. Printing with regular for loop. Interesting. So when we're printing it with a regular for loop, it looks what we're like what we're doing is similar. Let's see. I'm going to go into numbers.java, uh, get regular values. Oh, yeah, because an enhanced for loop is what we just saw before. That would make sense. And let me look at the pattern here. So we get enhance, get values enhance, get values regular. Uh, change values, get values enhance. Okay, and get values enhance uses this type of a for loop, and then get values regular uses this type, but they should print the same. And then we change the values and apparently print them again, which is modifying or multiplying each value by two. Except it looks as if that's not actually working, which it is, but we'll get into that. Okay. In numbers.java, what does the outer enhanced for loop represent in the get enhanced method? Okay, so guys, this for loop is going to perform the identical function as our older one, right? Or as our traditional for loop. Let me zoom in. So this for loop, zoop, what it's doing is for int row, what this does, this is interesting, it grabs the entire row. So we're telling the computer the value that we seek is an array. The array's value name is row. What is this array coming from? It's coming from numbers. Now, numbers is a 2D array. So we're telling it we want a 1D array out of this 2D array. Well, what it's going to do then, and I'm going to modify this some just to show you what I mean, is it's going to say, okay, well, you have a 2D array and you want a 1D array. Well, that's easy peasy because, boom, we'll give you this first row and that first row is its own array and so that's what's going to happen here each row is, is given to us then the second we get that row we say all right now we want individual values from the row for instance number 10 then number 11 and we loop through the values individually and we're printing them out with a space between that's what's happening here when we print the enhanced loop for loop similar we're just using indexes right we're actually accessing the array values at that specific index now, represent the get values method. How does this compare with the regular outer for loop? Uh, the outer for loop, it uses indexes, except again, guys, it's just getting the entire row by that index. So numbers.length, what's the length of numbers here? This length of numbers, this would be the entire thing. So when we do numbers.length, instead of numbers, instead of this, this gets the length of the entire array, which is how many rows? One, two, three, four, five. Whereas this version here, when we're looping through the column portion, is going to get the length of a column of column zero or column at index zero, that first column. Okay, so how does it, in, yep, we did that. In numbers, what does the inner for loop do in the get values enhance method? How does it compare with the regular? Um, they're both going through the numbers. I've already discussed that. In numbers.java, change the inner for loop of change values. Okay, guys, and before I do this, I want to point this out. This is a really critical and important concept. This is confusing. So notice that we actually did run change values. I promise, right here. So why did the values, why did these values not actually why do these values not actually change? Well, we have an enhanced for loop, and an enhanced for loop is making a local copy, largely, of your data. However, since it's double, since it's a 2D array, this first part of our for loop is actually grabbing an entire row. So it is grabbing our row of data. Now, this isn't so much an issue because since we have the entire row, we would be able to make modifications to it inside of it you could think of this to some degree guys like a train which i'm going to be real bad at drawing all right but here's our memory and our memory is rows right it's a 2d array and so we have a train Doop. wow this is going to get real rough real quick no one can mock my drawing skills choo choo that's a uh, something 
These are its wheels. Oh my god. The train says, kill me, please. Anyways, you get the idea. Here's our train. Now, if we have this train, we cannot make modifications when it's running. We put it on the tracks. You're not going to switch the train around. You're not going to be able to say, okay, well, really, I, I want to take this guy and put him back here. Or really, I want to delete this part of my memory. Nope, train's on the road. We're going. Or on the tracks, I guess. So that's not what you can do. However, you can grab a whole car of the train, for example, and maybe edit people. Maybe one person gets off, two new people get on, something like that. You could change this stuff inside of our train, but the train itself is locked into the memory. That is what's occurring here. So we can grab a whole row as we are, and we then, though, what we're doing here is making a local copy of the value. Our array here, our int value, is a, we're declaring a variable, that variable actually represents the value in the row. That value is then multiplied by two, which works. The value really is multiplied by two. However, that value disappears the second we're outside of this scope. It's not referencing the original array item. It is a duplicate item. Bloop, we hit this and that val is gone. We go back up here, it gets reset in a moment. Now, when we grab the whole row, we are referencing the row, which is why we can change the values inside of it, just not like this. How we can do it is this. This will allow us to do it. No longer do we have a variable called item. Wow, I have a four second memory today. Value called value. Of course, it was called value. See, students, I remember everything. Uh, now we're referencing the val the item in the array itself. And this should actually work because we're changing it at the index level. We're referencing the value. So this would be fine. This is how you change the values inside. Onward.